Hello, right, welcome to class, beloved kids. And today we'll be having a very interesting topic: basic computer concept by your favorite tutor, Engineer Bright Adibeli. Okay, basic computer concepts. All right, this is the lesson outline. Today we'll be discussing about definition of a computer. You get to know what a computer means. The description of a computer like talking about the features and what it entails and also we're talking about the parts of a computer system yeah talking about the software and hardware so it's gonna be a nice ride let's go so first of all we're talking about the definition of a computer how I many of us knows what a computer is how can we define a computer so simply put, a computer can be defined as an electronic device which accepts data as an input, processes it, stores it, and gives out information as the output. So in simply put, I'll say computer receives and then gives out. So you, you tell a computer what to do. And that's your input and then the computer brings out a particular result which we call the output and you will know that a computer can be programmed it works with facts that are put and these facts they are called data and they are processed and it gives out information that can be permanently stored okay next we'll be talking about the description of a computer talking about the system unit i mean of course i've seen a system unit before yes yeah, system unit all right the system unit is also known as the computer cabinet it is the case in which houses the power supply now most of us used to mistake the system unit for the cpu but the cpu is just located in the motherboard and all these are contained inside the system unit Next, we'll be talking about central processing units. Central processing unit, and this can be said to be the most important part of a computer. It may be called the brain behind which every action. Humans have brain. Computers have CPU, which is the central processing unit. All the works are done here, and it contains everything that is essential for the computer's effective functioning. Now the CPU has two major components. They are the control unit and arithmetic and logic unit, which is ALU. Control unit is the CU. And then we'll be discussing briefly about the control unit, what it means, and then what do we, what do we mean by arithmetic and logic unit? Does it mean one plus one, like arithmetic? We're going to know about it first. Talking about control units the control unit controls other parts of the computer system that is it is the main part of the cpu the major part input is first sent to the control unit from where it is then sent to other part of the computer to be processed Do you understand so whenever you put a particular input it comes to the control unit first then from there we get the arithmetic and logic unit now the ALU, which is the arithmetic and logic unit is of a computer, is that part of a system where the actual execution of instructions take place during the processing operations. Yeah, that means all calculations are performed there. Even basic arithmetic operations like subtract, multiply, add, and divide, and logic, they are all performed here. Next, we'll be talking about the main memory. The main memory, also called the primary storage, is also a component of the system unit because the CPU can only act on data and instructions that are held in the main memory. And also, the we have two types of main memory here, yeah, two types of storage. We have the random access memory, which is known as the RAM. And the read only memory known as the ROM. Now we'll be talking about these two types of memory. Now we're talking about the RAM, random access memory. It is a place in a computer where the operating systems and the data are in current use. And this um, data, they are kept and 
can be quickly accessed by the computer processor. Now, whenever I hear of RAM, it means a volatile memory, like a temporary memory, you understand? Now, we're talking about the read-only memory known as the ROM. This is built in computer memory containing data that can only be read and not be written to. And ROM contains the program that allows your computer to build. The data in your ROM can never be lost even when the power is turned off. And next we'll be talking about parts of a computer. We have the software and the hardware. Well, what do you understand by software and hardware? Well, we'll get to know about it. Are we going to say software means the soft part of the computer and how do you miss hard parts? Mm. All right, software. What are software? Software are also called programs. They are made up of set of instructions that the computer requires to carry out its task. Now, software means codes, you understand, are being supplied to the computer that tells the computer what to do. So, these are being programmed by programmers and the manufacturers, you understand. Then, we have types of software, we have the system programs. These are programs written mainly for the computer by the computer manufacturers, programmers. These programs control the computer. For example, we have our recycle bin that comes to our computer, our network, our my computer. Now, we also have application programs. Now, these programs are written by the programmers just like me. Just to wait. For example, I, when I did my first snake game, and then even our e learning platform falls under this category. Then we'll be talking about the parts of the computer called hardware. What are hardware? Hardware are the physical part of the computer that can be seen and touched. Remember, we cannot touch software. Can we touch the snake game? No. Can we touch the e-learning center? No. So hardware are those parts that we can touch, like the system units and the peripherals. Uh, we'll get to know about what are the peripherals, but you can see from the video here. Yeah, we can see the engineer working with the CD-ROM, connecting it, understand? And then next we'll be talking about the computer peripherals. What are computer peripherals? This, are, this is a term used for the hardware portion of the computer. They are made up of input and output devices. Yeah, like anything connected to the computers, they are called computer peripherals. And then we'll be talking about the input devices. What are input devices? These are devices that are connected to the computer to enter data commands and programs into the CPU. Then um, we have examples like keyboard, the we have the mouse, yeah, mouse assist to enter data, they are input devices. We have the joystick, we also have the scanner we use it to input data then the microphone microphone and um, what else next so we're talking about the output devices output devices you can guess what it means right it is used to receive data like after you tell the computer what to do the computer now gives you output now how does the computer give you the how the output now, it gives you using the output devices. Example, we have the monitor. Whenever you type, you see it on the screen. Yes, we have the printer. When you've typed, you print it out and then you see it. You see counter telling you what to do. Yes, we have the speaker. Speaker. Then the headphone. We use it to listen to music. And then we'll be talking about the summary. Remember, we talked about the definition of a computer being that a computer can be defined as an electronic device which accepts data as an input, processes it, stores it, gives out information. We also talked about the different parts of a computer, talking about the software and hardware. Software means programs and hardware means the part of a physical part that we can touch. And then we also talk about the description of a computer, talking about the main memory, the RAM, the ROM. What, what is the meaning of RAM? 
random access memory was in a ROM read only memory. So feel free to go back and rewatch and understand every part to meet again.